Social media is absolutely bonkers, isn't it? Like, I'm sitting here with a camera telling the world all of the sales that I've done, all the cars I've bought. I'm literally opening the world to my business. This is, it feels a bit mad, I'll be honest with you. But this is, this is social media, guys. So, welcome to another episode of Diary of a Car Trader. In this week's video, we're gonna look over the last week of my life as a car trader. We're gonna talk about purchases, sales, and problems. We're also gonna do a car of the week and any other stuff that I wanna talk about. Uh, we're gonna kick it off with a couple of issues that we've had. We've got a Mini that don't start. That's going off to be repaired. And we've also just bought a BMW 3 Series that's got a little issue with it. Here we go then, today's guest of mileage car is this uh, 63 plate BMW X5 that's just arrived. Uh, what can I say about it, it's 3 litre diesel, X drive obviously, a couple of marks on the wheels there. In fact that wheel's quite badly beaten, need to get that done. Uh, I've got the keys in my hand, it's got two keys as well. That one hasn't been used as much as this one, so look at the wear on the key guys. That might be an indicator to how many miles this thing's done. Unlock the car first calf. On the inside, it's a bit dirty, but yeah, it does need a good old scrub, loads of dust everywhere. Very dusty in here, looks like it hasn't been cleaned for a while. Hasn't been smoked in, it doesn't smell like it's been smoked in anyway. A uh, bit of wear on the seat there, it's worth pointing out. Uh, a bit more dust there. Any wear on the gear seat, not really. Any wear on the steering wheel, tiny bit on the steering wheel. Headrest looks fresh, bolster looks pretty good as well. I'd say that looks quite fresh. Um, I think more than anything just needs a bloody good clean. So I guess within 10,000 miles. So if, for example, if this car has done 95,000 miles, if you get anywhere between 90 and 100,000 miles, I think that deserves a, a green tick. So yeah, comment below, guess what you think the mileage is on this car. And guys, don't bloody cheat, yeah? There we go, we have one broken Mini. Um, it was starting, there was nothing wrong with it when it came in, and now it's just not starting, so it's going off to be repaired. So this 3 Series, this has just come in, um, and basically it needs a flywheel. If I just demonstrate what a noisy flywheel looks like, or sounds like, gear knob's moving like mad, yeah? And when you dip your foot on the clutch, not doing it now, is it? You know what? It actually don't sound too bad now. But somewhere in the middle of that pedal, there's a bit of a judder under the bonnet. Do you know what? It definitely needs a flywheel, so this is also going off to be repaired. You can hear it. Was that your foot off the clutch? Oh, halfway. Halfway. Flywheel. Definitely flywheel, wasn't it? Go Andre, Super Andre! Come on, bye! <laughs> That's it, the Subaru Outback has just come back after... What's it had done? It's had four-wheel alignment done, so it's good to go. It's had a valet. And uh, look, dust has got better of us though. Look how dusty it is, man. Mm. Right, first job of the day for me is going to be uh, cleaning the X5 because I am sick of driving this Land Rover. Like, as much as it, it's a great car, don't get me wrong, it's just so boring. Three litre diesel. In fact, that's a three litre diesel as well. But yeah, the X5 is just a nicer car. Let me know your thoughts, by the way. Would you rather be daily driving that Land Rover Disco 4 or the X5? Let me know in the comments below which one's for you. I'm more excited about the X5 personally, so I'm going to put it in the car wash and give it a good scrub. That's the M3 looking clean. Sammy, you didn't do a bad job of that one, did you? You're actually getting all right at this. Definitely needs a steering wheel, doesn't it? That, yeah, that needs a retrim, man. We need to sort that out. You know how to start it? 
Yes, Sammy, you're learning, mate. That looks a million times better, doesn't it? Oh, look. Electric folded mirrors. Nice little spec option, that is. LED rear lights. Let's see how we get some of the SMG gearbox now. They smooth. Smooth. That's it. Phoenix yellow. What a colour. Look at that. Nice. Right. I'll bring the X5 over, yeah? Yeah, all right, let's get going. Oh, look at all this dirt. Look, see, I get pleasure out of cleaning all these switches and that, getting all this dust out. This is going to be a nice one. So, first drop is uh, odor bomb. Let's get the lid off that. Set that off. Leave that going. Shut the door. Start washing. Oh, typical man, it's just started raining. Right, so inside the odor bomb is now done. Uh, it's made a bit of a mess everywhere, but that is good mess. Uh, it's time to start on the interior. Mate, stop ducking around. You know you can't afford it. Don't even look at it, yeah? That's it, nice and clean. Just got to get some photos of it now. Henry, George, you should stay there, all right? That's it then, job done. So that can now go up for sale. We will get it booked in immediately to get them wheels done because that's bloody embarrassing. Uh, but what we usually do is just advertise the cars and put them in for prep whilst the cars advertise. So uh, this car is a big spec car as well. I can't show you the mileage, can I? Let's just turn that ignition off so you can't see the mileage. That's better. Uh, yeah, so big spec car. It's got um, rear camera, pan roof, heated seats hashtag cow spec and it's also got a heated steering wheel which is nice and obviously it's an m sport so m sports generally come really well spec anyway uh in the back we've got heated seats in the rear as well and it's all very tidy in here now look it's cleaned up a tree and all that horrible dust that it had on it uh when it came in earlier it's all gone now look at that buy that one little bit there one thing i do want to point out about cleaning cars is i like them hygienically clean not necessarily sparkling clean i suppose that's the difference between a valeter and a detailer a valeter will just get your car clean a detailer would do all like the polishing and get all the bodywork nice i yeah i ain't cut out for that stuff i just like things to be nice and clean yeah hygienic that's the key there's two things that would bug me a little bit about this car one is um the cream carpets because they're just a nightmare to keep keep clean especially with my dirty shoes and the other thing that would just bug the hell out of me like this would bug me massively is that there yeah bug yeah, <laughs> yeah bad joke how bad joke right home time right so it is a few days on now it's actually friday for me today um hashtag fresh trim friday uh and i'm currently driving a toyota iq those that follow me on instagram would have seen this already on my instagram it's all right it's all right it's got a bit of fuel in it a little one liter engine it's tiny like i can touch the windscreen and i can touch the back window uh so it gives you an idea of how small it is uh, it's actually got back seats as well which is random but forget about that the reason why i'm driving this car is because i was daily driving the x5 which i absolutely loved but we had a call on it yesterday so it meant that i was i basically ended up getting lumbered with the iq so uh it's a pain in the ass i say about it all the time me not having my own car it's a pain in the ass i don't want to drive stock it's literally it's inconvenient for me to drive a bit of stock but um 
I've just been quite funny about what car I want and yeah, I'm not having much luck finding it. But I'll find one and I'm hoping to get myself my own car by the time my car show is here, which is the last Sunday of June. I think, like, I think it's like 27th of June. So fingers crossed I'll have a car by then. But yeah, it's been a manic week. Uh, done loads of purchases, sales. I've, I've still got to talk about that. And I've got a lot to talk about yet in this video. Purchases, sales, and the car of the week. Uh, something else I've had done this week. In fact, let's rewind back to when I was a kid. I used to love BMXs, right? Absolutely love BMXs. It's completely changing the subject. And uh, I was what that kid that used to fix up BMXs in, in my shed. I used to buy them, do them up, sell them in like the local shop window. Twenty pence or twenty pence a week for an advert in the shop window. And you know, like, like people would like other kids would come and buy BMXs off me, right? And I was also the kid that loved doing tricks on my BMX. Yeah, I used to love doing jumps, doing stunts, and all that type of thing. And I was that idiot that would have a go at anything, right? And one day, I had a go at something that I should never have had a go at, but I did, and it turned out quite bad, right? So I, I'd done a jump over this, like basically a big bloody roll of sellotape. That sounds pathetic, but that's what it was, right? jumped over it, my front wheel cleared it, my rear wheel didn't, hit it, threw me over the handlebars, I went oh. first into the ground and knocked myself out and I knocked my front teeth out, right? And ever since then I've had no end of bloody dentist appointments. Hold on, let's overtake uh, the iGo in the iQ, fifth gear. Um, job done. Yeah, I've had no end of dentist appointments and this week, I say this week, yesterday, I've basically had my teeth out. I've got this bloody big mouthpiece in my mouth at the minute, which I've got to have for the next couple of weeks. And I'm finally getting my bloody teeth sorted because they've just been, oh, I'm sick of it, I'm sick of it. So if you're wondering why I've got teeth like Bugs Bunny, yeah? Now, some people might actually think they look all right, but they don't look all right. They don't feel all right either. They feel bloody stupid. It's because I'm finally sorting this shit out, right? So, uh, yeah, let's now get to bingo. In fact, we'll fast forward to Monday, see if we've sold the X5, see what other things we've sold. We'll talk about purchases, and, we'll show, and I'll show you the car of the week, all right? See you in a bit. Look, the Mini's back already, so that actually needed a cam draft sensor. That was the reason why that weren't starting, so we've bought a new sensor for it. Andre stuck that on, and that is now running. And the 3 Series BM, the one that needed a flywheel, well, it's had a flywheel, so that's fine as well. And that can go up sale, right? So let's go inside, because it's bloody freezing out here. That's it. Sorted, let's shut that door. Right, so it is Monday. It is Monday, bank holiday Monday actually. And generally bank holidays are quite quiet, but this weekend it's been absolutely manic. I think that's probably due to everyone else being allowed to go out and everyone's just slowly getting back to normal. It's just been busy, man. Busy everywhere, busy on the roads, busy at the shops, and busy at Binka, so, which is brilliant, obviously. So, uh, what was I gonna say, my teeth. Yeah, I went dentist, so I was like, mate, you need to shave down these teeth. They're just, they were just too much. They were just dominating my mouth. So I went dentist. Uh, a couple of days ago and I got him to shave them all down. Shout out to Rish in Luton, he's a lovely guy. So, um, where are we going to start? Comments, because I had a comment the other day and it was from Toby Saunders. And Toby said, the questions have been an amazing idea, man. Such great content, better every video. So thanks, Toby. And yeah, I agree, they're bloody good. But today we're going to do literally one or two uh, because we're in a bit of a rush. We're not in a rush. We've just got a lot to get through uh, and we've yeah. Alfie Pearson, what is the quickest you have ever sold a car? We sell lots and lots of cars uh, on the same day that we buy them or sometimes literally as we've bought them, we've sold them already because we've got lots of buyers lined up for a certain type of cars. So we generally sell a lot straight away. Uh, I say generally, obviously we've got a whole, whole yard full of cars there, but um, some cars we do just sell straight away and it ain't unheard of that we sell a car on the same day, so that kind of answers that. Robert Jari, or yeah, Jari, awesome video, Cal. Uh, what cars, thank you, by the way, Robert. Yeah, thanks for everyone, all the love in the comments. I appreciate it, man. Uh, what cars would you say you have increased in value since COVID? Big engine cars seem to have increased in value, like RS4, V7s, and Mark IV, and blah, 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 blah. Mate, you're spot on. So high performance cars, strangely, have got, I would say pretty much every car going. Like the, the values of used cars at the minute seem to be really strong. And I would probably say that's due to the the, uh, the value of a pound dropping slightly during last year. So therefore, car prices have got to go up to make up that loss. Uh, but it's brilliant. Car values are really strong. Even the depreciation of new cars, they don't seem to be depreciation, just depreciating like they were 
say, uh, 12, 18 months ago. So it's a really good time for used cars. And yeah, hopefully it continues. Right, so now let's go through the wonderful list of sales. As ever, I am not gonna go through all of the sales because a lot of them are completely irrelevant. But if I see something that I think you lot are gonna be interested in, I will mention it. First one's first one I want to talk about is the X5. Uh, that didn't sell. The lady that called on it, uh, she booked an appointment. We got it all clean and ready for her. And she just didn't turn up. That's, that's quite a regular thing. It's a bit frustrating again, but that does happen quite a lot. Uh, so the X5 is still here. And the Audi RS7, we've got a couple of applications on finance. So there's a good chance that might be gone over the next few days as well. It might not though. So I just thought I'd throw that in there, yeah? Um, right, sales. Do you know what, first things first. Let me get my jacket off. I wore my big jacket today because it is freezing out there. It's absolutely freezing. And one sec. Wear your big jacket, but it's too big to wear inside. So sales, sales. Social media is absolutely bonkers in it. I'm sitting here with a camera telling the world all of the sales that I've done, all the cars I've bought. I'm literally opening the world to my business. This is, it feels a bit mad, I'll be honest with you. But this is this is social media, guys. Right, so right earlier on in the week, uh, we sold the Golf GTI, the red one that was in, I think, last week's episode. So yeah, shout out to Mark, who bought that. He's actually one of my subscribers. Don't crash it, will ya? <laughs> oh, has it got petrol in it? Ah, it's bloody luck, low, isn't it? It's for a trader's car, isn't it? Blimey, that's a lot for me, mate. <laughs> right, enjoy. <laughs> Yeah, thanks man, see ya. There it goes. The wonderful red five-door Golf GTI is sold. Yeah, there's a car in that clip that I kind of blurred out because I don't want you lot to see that car until next week, all right? A Vauxhall Crossland, that's a car that I didn't actually see. Again, going back to car selling immediately. Um, it came in at our shop at Poplar's and it went out immediately. So we bought and sold that car this week. Uh, KR58 Peugeot, I'm pretty sure that was in a video somewhere at some point, I don't know when. Uh, the Mini Cooper S that you probably saw in last week's video, that sold. Uh, Ford Transit Connect LL66. Uh, I don't think I saw that one either, but that apparently sold. The other VW Scirocco, the VN11. So last week I think we sold the 10 plate one and then this week we sold the 11 plate one. HF14 Land Rover uh, Evoque. Glad to see the back of that. That sat around for quite a long time. Uh, but lovely car. It ain't because, you know, some cars just take longer to sell. And I think part of the thing with car sales is you need to be patient. Yeah, very, very simple factor. Being a car trader, you need to be bloody patient because some cars do sit around for a while. I think for me, I don't get desperate to sell a car. I just get bored of seeing the same car sometimes. I think, God, I'd just like to sell that because it's just a bit boring looking at it every day. But other than that, they all bloody sell and it always, always works out all right. So, continuing on. BMW 228iM Sport, that was the black one. I think that was in a video as well. So you lot should be familiar with that. Uh, Ford Focus. Uh, Insignia SRI, you might have saw that. Uh, say I beef up, that's obviously the yellow one that you saw in a video a couple of weeks ago as well. Uh, Ford Fiesta, Citroen GS4. <laughs> ah, and the W Reg Ford Focus, you know the one we've done guest mileage on a couple of weeks ago. So now let's. Get rid of, that's the boring bit for me, the sales. Let's look at the purchases, that's the exciting bit. What new cars have come in? Let's have a little look. All right, so we actually bought this BK09 BMW this week as well. I don't even remember that car. Why do I not remember that? Um, anyway, that came in this week and sold this week. Vauxhall Corsa BMW 118. Uh, VW Passat R-Line, which I think is now sold as well. Um, another Astra Punto. VW Polo, 51 plate, I think that's probably just a scrap car. The Vauxhall Crossland, which I just mentioned, that's obviously now sold. Oh, the LL66 Transit Connect, the one I just mentioned, that's sold as well this week. Uh, Vauxhall Insignia again, we've got a few Insignias here at the minute apparently. Uh, Mazda 2, BMW 525 Diesel M Sport, NJ09. A Seat Me by Mango, that's a nice little car I suppose. Uh, Mini Cooper D 
and another Vauxhall Corsa, and another Vauxhall Corsa, and another Vauxhall Insignia. Yeah, we must have Insignia land out there at the minute. Let me just make sure I've not missed anything. My phone is going today. Right, so there are two jobs left to do. Uh, one of them is the car of the week, and the second one is gonna be the X5 mileage, all right? So let's get the car of the week out of the way first, play the music, get the you know, background music on the go. And this car of the week is something that we bought earlier on in the week. It's red, it's a sports hatch, it's not a Golf GTI, it is a... Vauxhall Astra VXR. Now a lot of people are going to be like, why have you picked an Astra VXR? Is there something special maybe about this particular car? And honestly, there isn't. I mean, well, I suppose it's done 70,000 miles, which is pretty good. It's a later reg car, so it's got like the push button start and uh, keyless entry, which is pretty cool. Let's get that sign out the window. Um, needs a clean, by the way. Obviously it's just arrived. Yeah, why Calvin have you picked an Astra VXR? I'll be honest with you. I've got a bit of a soft spot for these cars and um, do you know what, we're going to hit the road, we're going to do draggy times and I'll explain more when we get on the road, alright? <laughs> now you lot know I love a front wheel drive sports hatch, right? But that ain't really the reason that I picked this car as my car of the week. The main reason I would say is because Growing up, like, I grew up in Luton, right? Vauxhall's obviously a massive brand in Luton. Like my friends from schools, their parents stuff worked for Vauxhall and a big employer in the town. And Vauxhalls were everywhere. So the first car I actually ever bought and sold was a Vauxhall Astra GTE, right? Amazing car, 150 horsepower, two litre four cylinder engine, uh, naturally aspirated. Weren't massively quick, but it was at the time to be fair. Just adjust that seat down a little bit. And uh, I loved them. They then brought out the GSI, the Mark III, uh, which was like the replacement of the GTE, then the Mark IV GSI, and then this came along, the Astra VXR. And at the time when the Astra VXR came out, I would say I was probably about, I was born in 87, so these come out in, I think, 06. Let's just say somewhere between the ages of 18 to 20 years old, I remember going to the local Vauxhall showroom, right, in the, at the time I was in the building trade, and they had a brand new Arden Blue Astra VXR, and then next to it had a brand new uh, silver Vauxhall Vivaro Sportive van, right? And I remember for me at the time, that was my that was my dream two-car driveway. I had my van to get up and go to work in every day, and then to the right of the van, there was an Astra VXR, which I absolutely loved. Still, I'll let this Audi go first. There we go, mate. Since then, I, I know Astra VXR's have got a bit of a stigma, maybe it's a Trav's car as people say, but I think that's the nature of a sports hatch. I just absolutely love them, I love the way they drive, I love the way they deliver power, and we're going to find out in a sec how quickly it does 20 to 70 mile an hour, right? So, I'll be impressed if it comes anywhere near the Red Golf GTI that we've done in, I think, last week's video. That was obviously a really nice car. That was, was that tuned? That wasn't tuned, was it? Was it tuned? I can't even remember. That was a fast car though, so if it comes close to that, or even beats it, we'll see. I'll be I'll be impressed anyway. Alright, so let's get to a 70 mile an hour road and get on it. <laughs> Here it goes. Traction control is off. I press and hold the sports button to do that. Look at this. There you go, 70, easy as that. I did have a quick look at the uh, Golf GTI time. It was a stage one 250 brake car, by the way, and it had done it in 6.03 seconds. So uh, I think these are about 240 brake standards. So it should be quite similar. We'll see, yeah? <laughs> the results. <laughs> uh, there was obviously a lot of wind today. You can see it's windy out there. and. Uh, you can't compare this to a tune car anyway, can you? Like, it's me trying to say, is it going to be quicker than the Golf GTI? Obviously, it'd be nice if it would, but we all know that's just that's impossible, isn't it? So, uh, <laughs> Calvin, what are the results? The Astra VXR in stock form done 20 to 70 mile an hour in 
0.56 seconds, right? Go! So it is half a second slower uh, from 2070 than the Golf GTI and it sits in the middle of the Audi TT 3.2 V6 DSG and the Kia Pro 2 GT, all right? So yeah, I love these cars and then you just went into a Nissan Juke. For those that follow me on Instagram, by the way, um, you'll know uh, what a Nissan Juke door handle looks like now based on my story earlier on in the week. But anyway, let's go back to the subject at hand, the Vox Vauxhall Astro VXR. I think the bottom line is, don't forget your roots, man. Like Vauxhall's a brand that's within me. Growing up, it was in big brands and the Astro was like the go-to car for everyone. So uh, the VXR will always have a stamp on my heart. I do rate this car. It does feel lively to drive, like, although it hasn't just performed very well in Dragon time, Draggy Times. Dragon Times, yeah, that's what I should call them. The Astra, but yeah, it hasn't performed very well for drag in draggy times. It does feel like a quick car, but yeah, we're gonna wrap it up before we go. Let's quickly look at the uh X5 mileage three, two, one. Focus camera, focus. Uh, no, it's about as awake as I am. There we go. Uh, 193,014 miles. So if you guessed anywhere between 190 and 200,000, congratulations, you guessed the mileage on the X5 correctly. Isn't it mad? Nearly 200,000 miles. Look how nice that car is, 200,000 miles. But we've done a bit of valet in this video. I want to quickly tell you that valeting, if you are sitting out in the car trade, I used to overlook valeting massively. It is so important to get valeting right. We struggle with it. I'm not going to lie, as a business, we do struggle with it. Uh, we struggle to get good valeters. It's really difficult, but it's, uh, it's an important part of the business and it is important to get them clean, get them well presented. And even when you're photographing cars, get photographs the whole way around the car. You ain't got to be a bloody photographer. You ain't got to get a amazing photography shots just get good angles of the car the whole way around keep them clean keep them well presented and it definitely just helps people you know it's all about first impressions isn't it so uh, another question that I did get asked in a previous video was how long on average does it take for a car to sell I can't remember who it was that said that comment but I'll try and put them on the screen and average time I would say at a, at a real guess is about four weeks maybe uh, some cars sit around for ages some cars sell overnight there is no rule of the thumb with the car trade. It's all about being in the market at the right time and you just don't know. I think the key of it is just keep buying, keep getting cars up to sale and you will keep selling, all right? So yeah, I'm going to end it as that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, hit like, hit subscribe for next week's episode of uh, my week as a car trader. And uh, if you're on Instagram, give me a follow on Instagram at Calvin's Car Diary. All right, bye. In the next episode of Diary of a Car Trader, You'll be pleased to know I've got a video coming for you on Wednesday at 6 o'clock and this video is going to be solely or dominantly about the BMW X5 that you saw in today's video.